You're watching FJTN, the Federal Judicial Television Network. The federal court's changeover to case management, electronic case filing, has been underway for some time. The Federal Judicial Center's educational magazine program, Court to Court, has dealt with CMECF several times, visiting courts and learning from staff and judges their experiences in making the new system work. The FJC is presenting these segments again as a comprehensive look at courts undertaking CMECF. Keep in mind that in some cases, not all the individuals you'll hear are still in the positions they were at the time the segments were produced. Court to Court first visited two prototype courts, the Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of New York and the District Court for the Western District of Missouri. We wanted a basic understanding of what CMECF means to the courts. ECF is a new format that we're using to file cases in the federal court. It actually stands for electronic case filing. It's a technique by which attorneys use the internet to actually dial up our computers and technically docket their own pleadings with the federal court. Currently we are asked to have 25 civil rights cases using the electronic case files prototype system and we have six active judges who are participating. Our judges are participating at different levels. We have several who have said, put all of my cases in the program. We have some who have taken a wait and see attitude. We had to make sure that those judges who wanted to have paper copies of documents would continue to be able to have those paper copies. There was a need for the prototype courts to re-examine the federal rules of civil procedure and the local rules to accommodate electronic filing. Uh, we included in the rules committee um, three district judges, a magistrate judge, and a representative from the clerk's office. We thought it was important that the judges be involved early on in the process in the development of this program. The main rule issues that we had to identify were how to ensure authentication of documents that were electronically filed for purposes of Rule 11, for example. Um, what constituted a signature? And so we had to identify those things such as how to get the password that constituted the signature. That was included in the administrative order, while the rule itself indicated that the password would be the equivalent of a signature. We also had to be concerned about how to do notification. Once something was electronically filed, how did we ensure that the opposing party knew that something had been electronically filed? We decided that electronic notification was sufficient. I am Judge Lowry's courtroom deputy in the United States District Court for the Western District of Missouri. We currently have one case that is up and going on ECF uh, that's actually moving right along. Uh, the case uh, has had several motions filed in it. Uh, the court has issued uh, three or four orders in the case, so I've had an opportunity to process those orders. It's different in that the courtroom deputy has more involvement in processing the orders. Right now, um, whenever a motion is ruled on by the court issuing an order on a, an ECF case, uh, the order comes to the courtroom deputy and the courtroom deputy processes and dockets that order. What ECF has brought to us is the need for community outreach, uh, a public relations piece that we've never had before in the federal court system. What our court has done so far is created brochures and done mailings to area attorneys and provided demonstrations either at the court site or at attorney's law firm. My name is Bill Terry. I'm the operations manager for the Western District of Missouri. I'm going to show you how easy it is to file a motion using the electronic case filing system. First of all, we'll select Western District of Missouri document filing system from our homepage and we'll put our login ID and password in here. We've so far demonstrated ECF to over 800 individuals. Oh, the attorneys love it. The attorneys love ECF. Uh, it's so easy for them to use. The court's files are available to them 24 hours a day. There's no more running last minute to the courthouse. They get their orders and the other documents so quickly. Everybody wants to know how secure is this. Well, from the AO, we are hearing that the National Security Council has reviewed all the firewalls, all the connectivity, and determined that second only to their system, this is one of the most secure government operations they've seen. 
Right now we have 13 cases on here. We are still prototyping. We're approaching the end of the prototype period, and the, the AL has used the prototype to measure volume and how is the security system working. Uh, we're hoping to get 25 cases on within the next 30 days. We're excited about being a prototype project because that means that we can develop the system as it goes. And we've already done that. Attorneys call us and say, this didn't work for us. So we're able to say, we'll change it for you. And that is, that's just absolutely outstanding opportunity. It's been extremely easy to get those changes that we've needed because I've called the AO and like I said, sometimes within 24 hours, it's the way I wanted it to be. The culture of the court has changed because historically, the, d the court has taken in an enormous amount of paper and created an enormous amount of paper. And right now, we're moving to an electronic medium where there is no paper available. Uh, there was a situation where on our ECF case, I did not get a motion that I needed. And in what I would normally do, this was a Jefferson City case, I would call Jefferson City and tell them to fax that motion to me. But since it was an ECF case, I was able to get into ECF I click on that motion and I printed the entire motion out just as it appears in the original file. So I can see it's going to be great. That early enthusiasm in the Western District of Missouri was shared by the Southern District of New York's Bankruptcy Court. We also learned how the court dealt with some of the early questions surrounding procedural rules. In the prototype for the Southern District of New York Bankruptcy Court, electronic case filing means that we're doing bringing text files to the court through the internet. So as much as possible, every document comes in an electronic format, in an electronic text format. Now, all Chapter 11 cases filed in 1998 go on the electronic case filing system. We have 409 cases. Now that, for us, a case is all bankruptcy, a bankruptcy case and an adversary proceeding. Any given day between 650 to 700 people access our system. We're over 6,000 docket entries. There are quite a number of issues presented by moving from a paper to an electronic format. Uh, one of the most difficult and critical of those issues is what to do with Rule 11 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, which is also applicable in bankruptcy cases. Uh, that rule, of course, provides that an attorney's signature is a certification as to the uh, uh, good faith, in essence, behind the argument that the attorney is making or the factual assertion that the attorney is making. And what we finally uh, arrived at was to give out to each attorney rather than to each firm uh, a password to use the system. And we have uh, implemented through our a standing order, which I have signed, um, a provision that says that the use of a password is equivalent to a signature on a piece of paper. And we have very carefully schooled the users of the system that they should not be willy-nilly giving the passwords out to just anybody, but should keep control of them for that reason. Another of the issues concerned uh, when we still had to use paper, because the Federal Rules of Bankruptcy Procedure in some instances provide that you have to give people notice of various milestones in cases. Uh, and and most creditors don't have access to the internet, or at least we don't know whether they have access to the internet. So we concluded that in certain types of matters, we still had to use paper. We're pretty excited about the fact that we've trained over 500 attorneys to use the electronic case filing system, and that a good portion of, that, of those 500 attorneys are using it. We offer training. The purpose of this presentation is to We urge them to take training early on. Attorney's information. Case administrators much more are becoming quality reviewers. Rather than hands-on docketing, they are looking at what is being filed and offering guidance to attorneys on how to more economically file. Because the concept of docketing has changed. Initially, when we started, the attorneys were a little apprehensive. After we gave them adequate training and one-on-one -on -one, um, help regarding the electronic filing, it was pretty much easy transition for them. The attorneys became more dependent on us. Anything from technical questions to docketing questions, it was solely, um, we was in control of that. And once they knew they had ample help, everything was smooth. Basically, the support that we provide for the attorneys is anywhere from uh, installing of the application, installing of personal computers, and also uh, helping them docket their first motions. 
<laughs> what excites me about electronic filing is that uh, the courts have taken a giant leap forward, and uh, I think we have taken the attorneys by storm at this point. I think the most exciting thing for me in, this, in putting this system in place was first the idea of creating something so new and so different. Moreover, our help desk, make sure that you get a live voice. When you call in, no voicemail, no promise to call back, but a live person, someone in automation who's prepared to hold your hand and take you through it. We will have our entire system, not only Chapter 11s, but 7s, 13s, 304s, Every case that's filed here, we're going to have it on the system before December 1999. So in that sense, we are at the cutting edge. The greatest benefit is that it has enabled us to process an ever-growing caseload with an ever-diminishing staff. Um, frankly, we embarked on this project not because we thought it would be a novelty and a lark, but because it was absolutely essential for us, we were finding that we were having difficulty processing the uh, enormous amount of paper that came through the court. And we had to figure out a way to do this more effectively and efficiently while still providing to the bar the same level of service that we provided previously. And indeed, with electronic filing, the level of service that we're able to provide has actually increased dramatically because not only the judges, but uh, the public at large, anyone with access to the internet, even if they have only a read-only password to the system, can see any of our documents at any time. A key concern of many individuals in and out of the courts is training for the bar. Court to Court followed up those initial segments by speaking to the chief judge and the clerk of the court in the Northern District of Ohio, one of the early prototype courts. We also returned to the bankruptcy court in the Southern District of New York and talked to attorneys from firms large and small. Felix Garcia is a New York attorney who handles many bankruptcy cases. He was wary of electronic case filing at first. I was a little worried about um, this new type of filing because it was not familiar to me. We're all humans and we're all resistant to change. And this is a, a significant institutional change. It's a cultural change. In 1996, the District Court for the Northern District of Ohio mandated that all pleadings in the specialized maritime asbestos litigation be filed electronically. Through the Internet, the court has received more than 165,000 pleadings for 16,000 cases. I would say that the greatest impediment to the bar's utilization of electronic case filing is their lack of familiarity and understanding of the system. Because of not knowing how to, uh, not knowing much about this new type of, of filing, I, 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 w I did hesitate. Garcia overcame his hesitation with the help of the staff of the Southern District of New York Bankruptcy Court. When the Chapter 7 uh, filers came along and realized that they actually were saving the, the money, either time or money, by doing it in their firms, they became avid fans of the system. It gives me flexibility. I'm able to um, file these petitions um, at, at, at any time. I don't have to uh, commit myself to filing during business hours or during the hours that the court is open. Garcia's use has grown dramatically. I, I'd say about 50 percent of uh, my Chapter 7 petitions uh, through, this, uh, through the elect ele electronic case filing system. Larger firms working with Morris's clerk's office are also enthusiastic. We saw that as uh, an opportunity to move forward on something that we perceived, and I think correctly, uh, would be uh, the wave of the future. But the future means a cultural change. An increased speed and convenience only goes so far in getting the bar to use ECF. We can encourage and, if necessary, cajole the attorneys into agreeing to uh, put the case uh, into electronic filing. However, uh, it ultimately has to depend to a great extent on the willingness of the attorneys to go along with it. And how does one get attorneys to go along with it? I came to, to trust the system uh, simply through uh, using it over the course of several months uh, and just, just putting it through its paces, filing different documents, seeing if it worked. I think that the encouragement from the court, particularly the judges, is probably the most significant factor in getting attorneys and firms uh, comfortable uh, uh, with using the new electronic filing system. 
We involved the bar from the very beginning in the electronic case filing project. We set up a committee of uh, attorneys to help us draft rules and to draft procedures for electronic case filing. And I think that went a long way toward uh, making the bar feel that the rules that we had come up with were practical rules. I think the Rules Committee uh, was very successful. Uh, t some of the key issues that were uh, uh, discussed were issues such as um, you know, the, the security of the system and uh, uh, the, the ease of use for attorneys, uh, whether uh, uh, attorneys would be able to uh, file uh, documents that would be signed, uh, you know, basically how attorneys would satisfy Rule 11 requirements. Getting members of the bar to agree to ECF is one thing. Getting them to use it is another. Any project that actually changes the way someone comes to you, uses a system, takes a lot of time and effort in training. We got terrific training from the court. The on-the-ground training in the law firm is probably the most important because it gets the attorneys comfortable uh, with the system. Younger attorneys are automatically comfortable with the system because they grow up utilizing computers. Good morning, my name is Evelyn Rodriguez and this is my colleague Daryl McFadden and we'd like to welcome you to the bankruptcy court and familiarize you with the electronic case filing system. I think that maybe extra time to needs to be spent with uh, those of us who have practiced longer and are more used to the paper society and are frightened by uh, pressing a button on a computer to affect a legal consequence. Now I'd like to turn over the presentation. Overcoming those fears often means one-on-one -on -one attention, which can become a resource issue for a court. Currently, the way things work in the intake office, and as they have for years in the courts, are that the attorneys come into court, um, into the clerk's office, and this ECF training reverses that, and we actually go out to the attorneys to train them on their machines. With electronic case filing, they, the attorneys, are using their computers, and therefore it was our conclusion that that's what we need to train them on is their computers. That hands-on attention, though, is really important. That's very difficult to give. It's very labor-intensive for the court. It does take more time. It takes more time, and it you know, definite more strain on the clerk's office having an employee out doing this. The payoff is in the reduction in the amount of paper, the reduction in the phone calls we get, in uh, needing documents immediately. And we hope within this year the reduction in even the technical needs that they experience will be diminished. Right now in my firm's Cleveland office, I would say that approximately 10 percent of the litigators are involved in cases in the electronic filing system, and I expect that that number will probably increase uh, to well over 70 percent uh, of the litigators in the next five years. So it's a matter of never being discouraged, always, uh, always marketing it, whether it's internally or with the bar, and getting out there just getting out there and sitting down with folks one-on-one -on -one or in a group environment to demonstrate the system and uh, make ourselves available whenever and however we can. As that segment noted, CMECF is a sea change for the courts. As such, there's more than technology to cope with. The human side of dealing with change plays a big role. Court to Court visited one of the Alpha Courts the District Court for the Northern District of California, a week and a half prior to its going live with CMECF. Chief Deputy Clerk Jim Gilmore uses the metaphor of a dinner party to describe the need for flexibility when implementing ECF. This is like hosting and preparing dinner for about 20 people. We need to have everything sort of come to the table at once so everybody can sit down and begin this feast. And it's tricky like a dinner party is. It's just like having to delay the sauce on the stovetop because the thing in the oven isn't done. And, and you just have to try not to panic 
when that happens and try not to thicken the sauce too much to strain the metaphor. Systems manager Doug Purcell has a somewhat different way of putting it. Purcell is also the CM ECF project manager. The hardest part of it has been just doing the dance to stay on top of all of the pieces that there are. Tongue in cheek, Purcell says doing that has a price. It means that you don't get as much sleep as you used to and you drink more than you did before. We're getting 25 or 30 um, registration forms a day in and we're getting behind. Bud's been doing them all um, and he can't keep up. Lonnie's going to come in on Sunday with Doug. Doug's been coming in every Sunday. So you As the start date gets nearer, Clerk of Court Rich Weeking and Chief Deputy Clerk Gilmore worry about processing the rush of electronic registrations coming in from attorneys. I don't know how much longer we can do this. I mean, we got the big flood of them after the Recorder and uh, Daily Journal articles. So, uh, you know, it went up from about two or three a day to 25 or 30 a day, and it's still climbing. I don't know. What kind of capacity can we handle on a regular basis? One person can probably reasonably do a dozen or maybe 20 of these a day mm -hmm. uh, if they do it full time. Uh, of course, we don't have anybody who can do it full time right now. When they first began to think about what CMECF would mean, the managers quickly realized that all staff needed to participate in the changeover. So they held several town hall meetings. Trying to deliver the, the message by this kind of mechanism that we need you to think about what it will mean too because there are things we haven't thought of. Managing change often is touted as a worthy goal, but Gilmore says that change management is the least of their problems. There's all this talk about it. It sounds like it's something that you can manage, but you have to make change happen first. And that's the hardest thing in the courts. The organization is not made for change. It's very traditional. Precedent is all. When I first came here in the 1970s, one of my first jobs was to clean out a storeroom that was full of great big heavy glass ink wells and huge jars of Schaefer ink that people had kept around just in case these typewriter deals didn't work out. From ink wells to a paperless system, in a digital age, some of the pieces can be mysterious. It's a tape-changing device with a little robot that runs around inside picking tapes out of a cartridge and sticking them into the drive. And it took me a little while to get up the nerve to even op try to open the door when it first arrived. This is backups for the whole of the ECF box, the database itself, and then all of the other bits and pieces that go to make up the application. The hardware is only part of Purcell's challenge. There's also the software to install. Leave yourself plenty of time, but I also have a lot of faith in the folks at SDSD, formerly known as TTSD. Um, their documentation is usually very, very good, and I'm sure that it will be much better when the next wave, of course, comes on. Purcell had heard rumors that the software could be installed in two or three days. Doing it for the first time and doing it off of documentation, which is not necessarily in its ultimately polished form, takes a whole lot longer than two or three days. I'd say it would take you more like six weeks. Initially, the management team thought the docketing staff would be most affected by the change, but they discovered that those most affected will be their courtroom deputies. Because we are wedded to the idea that input happens as close to the source of the document or event as possible, they will actually, for the first time, being first time input data into a system. The courtroom deputies expect a year of heartburn with the new responsibilities for docketing combined with working through the paper for existing cases. But they look forward to the eventual payoff of no more photocopying and serving court orders. In the meantime, they will work out solutions as problems arise. And what about the docket clerk's jobs? My main concern was if it will affect it as in will I have a job and it won't affect it in that way. You know, nobody's going to be losing their job. But it will affect what we do or on how we do it. We are still responsible for the docket, but we will not be the people who actually enter things onto the docket. That will happen from some attorney in Kalamazoo. So we're still responsible for something that we're not actually doing now. 
that's going to be that's going to require a different way of thinking about what it is what our product is not so much data entry anymore but more quality control and customer service you don't have near as much uh, memorization involved whereas you have to memorize code after code after code before now everything's right there on your screen you just choose so it actually speeds the process up quite a bit and makes it a lot easier to get your work done I think the biggest part is just not knowing what to expect. The training kind of gets rid of those fears that you have of the unknown. What do we do if it's um, out of state, Well, If it's out of state, there's um, two selections at the bottom of your list. It's been really easy to pick up, and um, so I'm not really too apprehensive about the changeover. Everyone has a bit of resistance to change, and you can't avoid that, but this is definitely going to be for the best, there's no question and the court's judges? They <clears throat> may tend to uh, postpone or delay really getting involved with a project like this because it seems a little peripheral to their most important sorts of tasks. It was decided that in the San Francisco court, three of the 18 judges would begin taking e-cases. In the San Jose division, the six active judges will participate. And in Oakland, one judge will take e-filed cases the court began their training with a basic approach. Get their hands on it, let them feel it, and then let them decide how much of it they're actually going to do. About 80 percent of the court's cases are civil. ECF will be a big change for the court's outside customers, too. We did a run on our current docketing system database and discovered that there are 11,000 attorneys, approximately, who are part, who are parties to cases that are pending now. And they're all over the country, they're all over the world. So we decided let's go ahead and do some type of a web-based tutorial to hopefully get the training out to the attorney. So that's why we took a look at um, the FJC's tutorial to see will that, will that meet our needs. With a few modifications to the FJC template, the tutorial is now a key element of the court's ECF website and training for the bar. We've gotten some feedback from attorneys who have been using the, the tutorial, and so far the, the feedback that we've gotten is that pretty positive. They feel that it's fairly easy to use the tutorial. Despite the notices on the court's website, project manager Doug Purcell says they now realize that they should have advertised the changeover to ECF sooner and advertised it in print. When the court held a news conference two weeks prior to the launch date, ECF made the front pages of two legal trade papers. Print is obviously a medium which is still very, very significant because there were a whole lot of people all over town who went, you're doing what? And you're doing it when? And ha only found out then, some two weeks in advance of the so-called live date, that this was actually going on because it didn't register until it showed up on the front page of a newspaper. Advertising the old-fashioned media early, even if you don't have anything for anybody to look at yet, Weeking recommends documenting and cataloging what a court learns as it moves through the process. It, it helps to inform uh, uh, your later decision making and expedites uh, and that and minimizes the effort you have to put into where you've been in the past. There will be things to do, things to fix, things to tinker with, things to patch, policies to change for a year at least. One of the things they're going to get back is a thing that says, Aha! You have filed an electro case. You are now an electro filer. The experience of another alpha court shows how courts can deal with the fears that ECF often creates for those in and outside the court. The Bankruptcy Court for the Western District of North Carolina began its journey into the new system with electronic case management. Court to Court visited the Charlotte Division several weeks into the process. The fears I had about CMECF coming to this district were that it would not be as reliable as the system that we now have. The fears that I had were that um, it would possibly reduce my, my workload, um, and if that happened, then I might work myself out of a job. I guess one of the biggest fears I had was that we would have to greatly uh, modify the way we operated. Number one, that I would break the machine. Number two, that everything I put in would disappear. And number three, that I wouldn't even be able to understand it. 
The system that I had grown accustomed to for the many years I've been here, I knew would become extinct, um, so I would have to learn a whole new system again. I think my first reaction was the same as everyone else's, fear and resistance to change. So why would a court volunteer to put itself through this sooner rather than later? Our belief is that uh, CMECF is absolutely essential for us to be able to keep up with the caseload that we've got. The court considers 7,000 cases a year. The numbers keep going up, and the court knows that the new technology will help manage this ever-increasing caseload. But with its shared location in an historic building, the bankruptcy court has another urgent, albeit low-tech, reason to convert to CMECF. Oh, the records, they're, they're really a mess. We have no space. We have absolutely no space in the basement. There's no case probably closed in, in on our shelves any longer than four months. We're probably shipping the archives at least 100 boxes every four months or less. More important, though, it's, it provides uh, a great enhancement to our service to the people who use the court. We file hundreds of documents a day. I'm a Chapter 13 trustee and in a location that's remote from Charlotte. So I can't just get in my car and drive down the block and go to the clerk's office. So the, the ability to file remotely is greatly appreciated. We will be able to docket and file documents in an efficient manner and that we will be able to run reports that are useful to our office. I think it will be wonderful. I think we can take a laptop computer and literally have our whole office at our fingertips. Most Alpha Courts agree that the preparation prior to going live is critical, but there's no standard version of how to prepare. Each court follows its own style. A key factor for the Western District of North Carolina Bankruptcy Court is the self-directed team management of the staff. Almost everybody in my court's involved in the program from day one. We had a number of committees, you know, the training committee, the dictionary committee, and the publicity, and everybody in chose a committee that they wanted to be on. It got everybody involved and I think it made the transition easier and it got people excited to get into the system. We jumped in with both feet just like the staff did. We did the same training exercises. Robin Cherkas, a case administrator in the Asheville division, became one of the court's trainers. Again, the great thing about aiding case flags is it's versatile. You can add a flag at the same time you're removing a flag. The top box is going to enable you to set a flag. She emphasizes showing people how CMECF will benefit them directly. Once they have an incentive, then you're going to overcome that fear by replacing it with training, knowledge, and information. How would that help you or assist you in the administration in a day-to-day -day, uh, situation? Anybody? Barbara? It would help us by getting the cases closed and discharged in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. It would also help identify if we need to docket a receipt. We've been through tremendous amounts of training thus far, so that has kind of gotten me used to the new system, and some of the fears have subsided. The terrific thing about editing case data is now you're actually editing information that's in the system as opposed to making a notation on the docket. Courtroom Deputy Sean Lisey from the Asheville Division is also responsible for docketing. She had feared that CMECF would put her out of a job. And as the attorneys are using our system more and more, then I will be doing less inputting and more reviewing. But I will review everything that they input. So actually, the workload will not go down. It will only change. Training does overcome fears, but training has its own challenges. I would say the biggest challenge to staff training is the period of time that takes place between when structured training stops and when going live begins what I call the reinforcement period. You have to make sure that those skills are continually reinforced so that the staff maintains a high confidence level and, and a comfort level with the system. And in our core, we've met that challenge by preparing weekly exercises for the staff in a particular topic area that we felt um, could use some reinforcement. If you're checking a case, you'll want to be sure and check to make sure that a county is shown when you're performing your data quality assurance. The court went live with the case management part of CMECF on March 5th. It delayed the electronic filing part of the system and so has begun to train outside users only recently. We wanted to know the system very well before we went out to start training others. 
your filing date, you, you never can mess with that because it's always going to be today's date. So whenever you go to enter in this petition at your office, it's not going to be entered until the date that you actually enter it. And you'll never be able to change that date. Case Administrator Lucretia Sullivan also volunteered to be a trainer. She says comfort and familiarity are key factors in training users from outside the court. Number one, we want to make the training as painless as possible. We want it to be smooth. Your country, your phone, fax, and email are all optional information. If you choose to put that in, then that's your decision, but we're, it's not required for CMECF. Sullivan, who also trains court staff, says she taught herself a great deal about CMECF by repeatedly working in the training database whenever she had the opportunity. I was docking motions, opening cases. Once I started training, I was forever learning. Um, every class that we taught, there was always something, something new that I would learn. The trainers have spent a great deal of time and they, they have the ability to translate their training into layman's terms. I know very little about computers, but they can speak my language. So what we want to do is we want to review this information before we submit the transaction. And this is a habit that you definitely need to get into when you start doing CMECF. In March, when the court switched from BANCAP to electronic case management, Judge Hodges asked that no paper files ever again be brought into his courtroom. The main reason I told the clerk uh, that we didn't want any more files in the courtroom was because I wanted to be a hero of the clerk's office. It's easy to understand why. The week before court, I would start pulling files off the shelves and making sure that each document that the judge need, might need to review was tagged for the judge's review. And I had to make sure that those documents and files were in order, um, in the order that the cases would be called on the docket. I no longer have to do any of that. Case number 144, J. Craig Whitley, hearing on motion for relief from stay of City National Bank, debtor's response. As Lysie calls up each file, it's immediately available on Judge Hodge's screen. Court to Court was there on a Chapter 13 motion day. By lunchtime, Judge Hodges had heard more than 120 motions. And we have not had a file in the courtroom during that whole process. CMECF has had all those files there available to me. What's remarkable is that the court has had a 33% increase in new cases during the first three months of electronic case management. There's much to do after going live, says the court's ECF coordinator, Karen Hevner. To keep everyone informed internally and externally as much as possible, continue to have regular committee meetings to be sure everyone's on task, and train, train, train. Then you can go back to your docket report, click on the report hypertext link, and choose docket report. And don't be too proud to ask for help. There's probably another court out there who has already experienced what you're going through and probably already has a solution or a workaround. Now once you submit it, you're going to get a, a notice of electronic filing verification screen. We hope you found these segments helpful. Please go to the FJC website at the address on the screen, print out an evaluation form, and fax it to us at 202-502-4088. Court to Court will continue to follow the implementation of CMECF and bring you more information from the courts themselves.